Okay, good afternoon. Are we on? Welcome to the 2013 World Dairy Expo seminar. Today's seminar, Dairy Sustainability, Why It's Important to You and Your Operation, is sponsored by Nutrition Physiology Company. The speakers today are Roberta Osborne, Manager, Farm Smart Innovation Center for U.S. Dairy, and Dan Rice, Partner at Prairie Land Dairy. Roberta Osborne is the manager at Farm Smart Project for the Innovation Center for U.S. Dairy, where she's responsible for the development of the smart, a Farm Smart tool that helps dairy producers improve a farm's bottom line and environmental impact. Prior to joining the Innovation Center, Osborne served as a dairy educator with an environmental focus at Michigan State University Extension. In that position, she worked with 15 counties and held statewide responsibilities in environmental management. Dan Rice is a partner in Prairie Land Dairy at Firth, Nebraska, which earned the Outstanding Dairy Farm Sustainability Award for 2013 from the Innovation Center for U.S. Dairy. Prairie Land's cows produce meat, manure, and milk, and they have two business extensions. Prairie Land Foods delivers local source-verified farm-direct milk and dairy products from Prairie Land Dairy, and Prairie Land Gold, the farm's composting operation, utilizes byproducts and biodegradable waste to create soil amendments sold regionally. This seminar has been approved for continuing education credits from the American Registry of Professional Animal Scientists and American Association of Veterinary State Boards and race programs. At this time, I want to also ask you to check your cell phones and please silence them. Great. Thank you so much. Um, good afternoon. Welcome. Ni hao. Um, we're here today to talk about this thing called dairy sustainability and why it's important to you and your operation. So right now, I'd like you to imagine a world where food demands are going to increase 70% by the year 2050, by the time my own daughters are the age I am right now, where land and resources are finite, and where retailers are looking to manage risk so that they're sure they can get a steady supply of food um, to market. And the world is changing just that quickly. We all know we need to be as efficient as possible, and now it's almost as if the stakes are a little bit higher. So companies are trying to manage risk, just like you do, and they're trying to evaluate their suppliers to strategically source their products, um, and they're trying to create yardsticks to measure your performance by. And that is the topic of today's conversation. Thanks for joining. Um, I'm a staff member, as he mentioned, at the Innovation Center for U.S. Dairy. And the Innovation Center was created in 2008. Um, it was formed to tackle issues that were too big for any one person to take on. So you can see we have a number of companies um, and producers that signed on together to look at situations just like the one I spoke about. We are really focused on telling the story um, of dairy's great heritage of stewardship, and finding ways to sustain dairy businesses uh, in the future. Dan Rice, who we'll introduce in a minute, is one of the producers who is a member of this commitment. We have about 20 uh, producers sitting on our Sustainability Council, and he's also a 2013 uh, Dairy Sustainability Award winner. So Dan, I'll let you uh, take a second and introduce yourself. Prairie Land Dairy and why sustainability is important to us and why we were chosen to receive the uh, Sustainability Award this year. Basically, Prairie Land Dairy uh, was formed with four family farms that were all milking anywhere from 100 to 200 cows. And we felt to compete in the for the next generation, we had to do something different with our operations. So we combined them into one LLC and started Prairie Land Dairy in, in uh, 2000. As we, uh, as we grew and, and, and went along, we uh, realized that we were just 20 miles out of Lincoln, Nebraska, and decided that uh, we either had to have an exit plan for the next generation or embrace the community. And uh, we decided as a group to embrace the community and to market directly to them. And because of that, we started our processing plant and also our composting operation. Um, and. Uh, Sustainability really at its core, when, when we think about it, is, is uh, in, in my mind, is, is your dairy farm going to be there for the next generation? And uh, how important is that to you and your family? So we really in, embrace that. Um, I personally have 
our, our group has about nine of the next generation working on the facility right now. So we're really living out uh, sustainability for the next generation. We also, uh, through our processing plant, we, we try to um, come out with new products that uh, are sustainable. We've gone to a pouch system that allows us to reduce landfill waste by 85% in, uh, in institutions such as schools and prisons, those types of things. And then we also have a program for our compost operation where we bring uh, waste from industry back into our compost operation. We make soil amendments and, and market those as well. So, uh, so sustainability is really uh, near and dear to us and we, and we think about it on a daily basis. We've gone through the Farm Smart program, which we'll talk about here uh, in a few minutes. We've also gone through an energy audit. But really, it, um, one thing that I really want to bring home to everybody today is sustainability is also about, it has to make economic sense. We can all talk about sustainability and how we want to uh, be better stewards of the, of the land and all, that other, all those other things, but we still have to be in business tomorrow, and it has to make economic sense. And I'll share some of those things that we've done that have made, made economic sense and helped us to be better stewards. So I'll turn it back to Rebecca. All right. Thank you, Dan. Um, these, as we said in the beginning, sustainability matters to producers because there are some real market drivers um, going on in the world. Doing more with less, demonstrating progress, because facing this future, we're going to have to be able to prove that we're um, being more efficient and that we're going to have a steady supply of our wonderful dairy product available. And uh, retailers want to know this. And so um, the, the last thing is that we are trying to help the producers by coming up with a single approach, a voluntary method in which they can track and communicate their uh, sustainability and progress. So imagine, um, imagine buyers collaborating with us. This is an example, uh, Unilever has a sustainable um, philosophy to sustainably source their products by 2020. Um, they really want to make sure that that milk that they want to market is going to be there and that you can see their goals on the bottom there. They're really driving for this. The buyers of milk really understand what's happening and consumers are asking for it as well. And everyone knows that um, we can't suddenly decide who's sustainable and who's not. We can't, we can't do this overnight. But these companies are looking for ways to prove and measure what's being done to ensure sustainable progress. So uh, producers have a history of feeding the world, and we know that. But the problem is, is that now, how are we going to prove it to the retailers? So I want you to imagine that a retailer decides to make a checklist by which to evaluate your farm. Imagine they know nothing about dairy farming. They've never set foot on a farm. They're not sure if it's a cow or a llama. Seriously, we've had this. Um, and imagine also having to complete a different checklist for every retailer uh, on the, that you market milk to. That would be a nightmare, right? But this is not a dream. There are many such lists that are already in development. And I have something, Dan, I have a little homework for you today. This is one of the lists. And come here, I want you to do this in your spare time. I am not kidding. Uh, Dan, you have to fill this out. I've got two more when this is done. Oops, it's still not enrolled. Oh, and you know what? I ran out of staples last night. Here's the rest of it. Uh, seriously, this is one of the lists that's been developed for producers to fill out um, as a yardstick, if you will, for the retailer to decide um, whether Dan's uh, producing milk in a sustainable way. He's not, done, he's not to the end of it yet. Sorry. You got lots of spare time as a dairy producer. I know that, right? <laughs> All right. Well, the good news is, is that dairy producers saw this coming. You are the original sustainability leaders. Um, I don't know any better mechanism than the cow. You can grow feed. She eats the feed. She produces manure to fertilize the soil, to make the soil better in order to grow more feed. 
Um, and I think dairy production is, is one of the most sustainable models that there are. And you producers um, have a long history of this. And I just want to kind of go back to definitions. People think they know the definition of sustainability, but in my mind, stewardship is the preservation and conservation of natural resources, doing good things. But sustainability is doing those things, and just as Dan said, have to be profitable at it. If you're not profitable, you cannot continue to dairy farm. So my challenge is to have dairy producers own the word. You know, I've had people say, oh, sustainability, that means organic, or this means that. No, to me it means preservation, enhancing livelihoods, improving profitability. And I just want to point out, um, I do spend a lot of time trying to educate retailers on, on the good work that dairy producers have done. I think a lot of you have heard, you know, dairy production since my father's time, the carbon footprint of a gallon of milk has gone down two-thirds. I mean, tremendous progress. You guys have the lowest carbon footprint of producing milk of anyone in the world. And that's something to be really proud of, and that's a story that we have to share. And so what we're trying to do is design a system by which we can convey that message in something that's measurable that everyone can understand. So we are trying to build a plan with the producers in mind, um, creating a way to, to uh, uh, talk about the carbon footprint using real farm data and science uh, to create an approach to measure your efficiencies a way to communicate it up the value chain. And additionally, we're working um, on a project that's going to help you make management decisions that will link improved profitability with environmental impact. Um, and this is a slide of our Sustainability Council. This is the council that kind of governs our efforts. And you can see how many people are involved. And I want you to really notice the, the best thing about it is that this includes everyone throughout the, the value chain. There's producers, there's processors, there's retails and brands, there's some big ones that you know, there's government agencies um, that aren't working today, but anyway, um, World Wildlife Fund, some non-governmental agencies. These people all realize this is a problem they want to tackle together. It's too big for any one person, but together we can do it. And the best part about this is this gives us a forum to talk to each other. Communication is the, the you know, essence of moving anything forward. We have to understand each other and talk to each other. Um, I want to also point out that all these individuals that serve on this council, they're doing so at their own expense. Um, they really feel it's important. They're taking their own time to travel. And so I, I think that speaks a lot for the efforts that this council is, is working with. And the value of what's in it for you, um, again, we're trying to create an approach that everyone understands um, that will allow you to communicate your story that will help you improve an economic and environmental performance, and also a scientific way to estimate your footprint for reporting purposes when you need it. And again, this, has been, this approach has been developed on real science and real farm data information. We, I do want to point out, too, um, I see some friendly faces in the audience. We have the buy-in and the support um, of a lot of retailers. Um, I see some in the room, uh, some cooperatives that have really been helpful. Um, this has been truly, um, truly a remarkable feat. When you consider how large the dairy industry is, there's 50,000 producers, then there's all the processors, all the marketing cooperatives, all the brands. This has really been a huge effort to get everyone speaking with each other um, and moving this issue forward. And so we have worked to develop this approach. Um, it's called, um, we're calling it the Stewardship and Sustainability Guide for U.S. Dairy. And what we've done is taken science, findings from our um, fluid milk life cycle assessment. We've taken those findings 
and we're able to um, use that information to get a very quick um, method to assess your dairy sustainability and your carbon footprint. Um, the first edition or the first version of this, this hasn't launched yet, it's still under review. A lot of people are making comments on it, but the first topics that we chose to talk about were energy, greenhouse gas, and animal care. These were the three items that we kept hearing again and again from retailers that they said were the most important to tackle first. Um, and, and we'll show you a little bit more um, about the tools that we've developed to help you assess this. I wanted to take a minute and talk about the animal care component. Um, animal care um, again, the retailer said this is a really important thing to our customers. We need to know what producers are doing in terms of animal care. So we have worked together with the farm program, but we can work with any kind of an animal care program that your co-op or that your farm might use and plug it into this, this system. And now, um, you, you remember I told you about the checklist, or I showed you the checklist that Dan has wadded up at his feet right now. Um, imagine that we came up with a checklist, because of the science that we know, that we're able to boil down into eight questions. That's the tool that we've developed to, to work together with this guide to help you assess the carbon footprint of your farm. And the best thing about it is um, it's not enough to just do it and understand it yourself, right? We've got to be able to share this information with whoever asks for it, retailers, brands. And so imagine that we're able to build a set of smart tools that are available online free of charge in which um, the producers can put in their information, uh, the fleet and the plants can put in their information, and they all talk to each other and come out with a report, a custom report for a brand or a retailer that talks about how that milk was produced. What's the um, carbon footprint of that gallon of milk? Um, and that's exactly what these smart tools do. Um, and I do want to reemphasize, this is completely voluntary. We have developed this because of the demand from retailers and in the absence of the dairy industry doing something, putting you in the driver's seat, someone else is going to come up with a checklist. Remember that? So um, it's, it's really focused on helping you talk about the great things you do on your farm every day. And I also want to make the point that the burden is not just on the producer's shoulders. The burden is shared by everyone in the food chain which includes the transportation and the processing plant, as well as the retailer, um, right to the consumer. So we like to say from grass to glass, we can capture and characterize that gallon of milk in a way that no other, um, no other egg commodity can because we're capturing all those items. Um, I wanted to show you a little bit about what it looks like when you uh, sign into this tool that I spoke about. Um, it's very simple, and again, you start with just an eight-question checklist, um, and it allows you to enter some items like dry matter intake, the composition of your ration, number of cows, and you're able to enter that information very quickly and easily as compared to the checklist and um, get a, a characterization of your farm, a benchmark, if you will. Um, we realize it's just the beginning phase, but we feel that um, if you don't know where you're starting from, how, how do you know how far you've gone in the future? So that's why we've, we've created this tool to benchmark yourself as a starting line to measure future progress against. Um, and we think it'll be really helpful. This, this again is a screenshot uh, of what you'll see. Um, this is, these are all the questions that you're going to be asked. And we're able to do this, I kind of call it like a shortcut method, because we have algorithms embedded in this uh, tool that's capturing information. For example, we capture the information um, from growing your crop uh, 
And, and whether it's grown in Nebraska, like Dan, or grown in Michigan, where I'm from, we know about how much water it takes to grow a crop in that area, how much energy it takes to grow, and we have those figures embedded in the background, if you will, so that we know um, if you type in that I grow 1,000 acres of corn in Nebraska, we'll know about how much energy it uses, and it'll pull that information in. If it says you produce, you know, 1,000 tons of manure, it'll pull in the energy information um, to tell me how much energy is used to spread manure in that area. If you tell me how much electricity Dan uses to run his milk house in uh, Nebraska, I know uh, how much, uh, where that electricity is from. Was it from a coal-powered plant? Was it from a hydropower plant? I know according to the region, according to the state, how that electricity came about. So when he tells me how much electricity he used, I can tell you, give you an estimate of the greenhouse gases that were created in producing that electricity. Um, and again, it's just in its beginning stages. Um, but here are the results. We have some people that have to have a visual, they're visual learners, I call them. So we have a pie chart that shows, for example, this is where the greenhouse gas emissions from this farm are coming from. Some are enteric, some are from feed production. Um, but it also gives you a table so that you can uh, see exactly um, your uh, carbon dioxide production, for example, and we have it benchmarked against national averages. So you can kind of see where you're at. And, and we have that for each of the four categories. And this will do the same thing for when you click the energy button instead of the greenhouse gas button. It'll let you see how much energy you're using at each of your various uh, enterprises, I call it, within the farm. And it also um, allows you to benchmark it against a national average. So, it, and again, it's just in its beginning stages, but we're, we're getting there. Um, I want to take a minute here and let Dan talk about how uh, Prairie Land Dairy has used FarmSmart. He has run it, um, and he's using it on his farm. And I'll let you go ahead and share those, those stories. Stay up here. I, I, okay. I, wanna, I think we ought to open it up for questions right now, just a little bit. Um, any questions about this program? Anything else? Yes. I missed a very important point. Thank you for asking that question. Thank you for asking that question. That's a really important point. Because after many years in extension, one of the things I know very well is that working with producers Anything they tell you is completely confidential, as it should be. And so we've designed this tool so that it's password accessible only by you. If you choose to share the information, we do have an export button. And you can save it. Um, you can print it out. You can save it as an Excel file. Um, for example, if your cooperative would like to see the results from your farm, we can go ahead and export that information to your co-op. I also want to point out that it's password coded. You can look at your farm in 2013, go back and look at it in 2014, run it again, access it. And lastly, and very importantly, is this information is going to reside at the Idaho National Lab. It is where all the US nuclear power plant secrets lie. We felt it was one of the most secure places that we could find. And we're the first agricultural group that they've agreed to work with and house our data. So again, we've tried to be very, very careful with this. Um, I will say I have found that producers are pretty, pretty willing to share with their co-op. 
And so there have been some pilots started, some cooperatives that are asking for this information from their producers. But again, the co-op's agreeing to keep it confidential. When you export the information, I want to point out there are no names attached to it, not even cow numbers, just the analysis is exported. But we'll create um, any kind of an export function that your cooperative needs or that your brand needs. Um, for example, Starbucks has a very, very um, particular way that they want the data to come to them. We're able to export the data to them in, in a way that, that works for them. Um, we have a little, we just design it, we put a button on it that says SB for Starbucks. Um, and remember, Starbucks sells more milk by volume than they do coffee. So, you know, something I didn't know when I started this job, but there's a lot of companies that are marketing milk in ways that I hadn't even thought about, but that are important. Okay, any other questions about the program? Yeah. It is done on a fat and protein corrected milk basis, so we feel we've, you know, done the best job we could to um, kind of equilibrate it, right? Good question. Anything else? Okay, the biggest question, I guess, in, in my mind would be why, as a dairy producer, would I do this? I see a couple people smiling, like, yeah, no kidding. Mm -hmm. why, would I, why would I take my precious time away from my cows and my family and go through this program? And I think there's some retailers in the room that may be able to answer that question a whole lot better than I can. Um, I'll just tell you from our from our viewpoint at Prairie Land, um, we market our own milk. We get about uh, 10,000 people that come through the dairy and tour it every year. And what we do is uh, the tour guides, which is usually my mom or some other retired lady, we, uh, we have them fill out a 3 by 5 card of any questions that they, they might get uh, on, a, on a tour. And we get sustainability questions every day. And so we have a very close dialogue with our customers. And uh, just to, it's really important, guys, that we start this conversation. And this gives us the ability to have the conversation as a dairy industry, as a whole, and as a group with one voice. Because as Rebecca said, and I just want to reiterate what she tried to show with, the, with that checklist, is that if we don't define what sustainability in the dairy industry is, all of our customers will, okay? We get a battle ahead of us, and it's not, it, it, we put it all under sustainability, but it, it's a battle ahead of us of what tools we're gonna have to use for the next generation. We saw the fiasco with BST. We've, we're now we're hearing about tail docking, dehorning. What are we gonna do about GMOs, guys? It scares me to death. One of our biggest customers has told us that we will not sell any milk in their store unless we're GMO free in two years. I don't even know how to do that. I don't know if I want to do that. But these are the conversations that are happening out there. And we as dairy farmers, a lot of times are at home milking cows, and we don't get involved and, and hear those conversations. But I'm, I'm here to tell you, they're, they're, they're being talked about and they're happening every day. So this is a way that you can help the dairy industry come forward because quite frankly, the Innovation Center is making great progress. And when they sit down with companies like a Starbucks or something to say, we have our checklist. This is what we do about sustainability and here's what we've done to improve it. They'll say, yeah, you guys, you guys have it done, we don't have to get involved. But if they get involved, this is the kind of stuff that they come up with. I didn't know Rebecca, I didn't know Rebecca was gonna do this, but this is the kind of checklist that they come up with and they expect us to meet those expectations. And I don't know about you guys, but I don't want to go through that. But if we have a, a simple program like what Rebecca showed here, it took me about a half an hour to go through it for our dairy. So I just wanted to make that point of that's why it's important. And, and the other thing is, as, as I have dialogue with, with the corporate people, they're really not interested in what score you get or I get, or even the industry has. What they want to show their customers is improvement, okay? Um, nobody knows what the score should be, they just want to see improvement. They can say in the last five years, they've improved their carbon footprint by 10% or 20% or whatever, whatever it might be. 
So that's why, in my mind, it's important. And I just wanted to uh, bring, bring that up here. Uh, so it's important that we get participation from dairy farmers and, and get a benchmark of where the dairy industry is with greenhouse gases and carbon footprint. So any co-op leaders here, please uh, uh, help us get our word out to have the guys go on here so we can establish a baseline so that next year we can do better and show our customers that we're doing better. Okay, so what we did at Prairie Land Dairy, I'll just a quick run through here of, of uh, what we've done. And as I stated earlier, I'm really not interested in doing a whole lot unless it makes economic sense to me, right? So you'll see all these things have made economic sense for us and, and helped us. So we reviewed her guide and um, understand the process and the measures that they're looking for. And we used the smart, Farm Smart program as she just went through. And we want to get a snapshot uh, of our dairy and get, a, get a, a baseline score, OK? And one of the other things that we've worked with is an energy efficiency audit in the program here. Um, those audits, our audit was funded by the USDA. They do pay for, for those audits. I don't know if that program is still in place or not. Probably not today, but maybe, to, maybe next week. But uh, a, a very thorough energy efficient audit was done on our farm. And we've, we showed, they showed us a lot of different areas that we could, uh, we could change and, and make, some, make some huge differences on our bottom line. Uh, one of the things that we looked at, that the ener this is a copy of our energy audit, and what it showed us was that if we would use low temperature detergents to wash uh, our pipeline, uh, that we could, we could save quite a bit of money. And so we, we put that in place. We actually uh, we used less propane that way, and we actually cut out one hot water heater. Um, here was something that caught me by surprise. I don't know how many of you guys look at your electric bill, but I got about five meters on my electric bill. We just pay the bill typically and away we go. But what this audit showed me was that one of my meters was on a different rate. I just had been overlooking it for the last five years, right? So this audit brought that to my attention. We called the electric company and they changed us to the other rate and we saved money uh, and it actually paid for the audit just in that one thing. So a lot of times they'll show you things that you're just overlooking. Um, light replacement. And we'll see a graph later of, if we change out our lights to a more efficient lighting, how much money that can save us on our dairy. Now, I don't have the capital uh, right now to do the whole dairy. But what we're doing is as we replace our lights, we're replacing them with a more efficient light. So that's been a, uh, something else that we, we are doing. Um, we, have, we irrigate all of our flush water through pivot irrigation. And we had a diesel motor that was doing that. Um, they showed us where if we replaced that with an electric motor, we would save money as well. So those are some of the things that are highlighted. Uh, very thorough audit. It was very good for us. And they identified about $18,000 worth of savings that we could have in a year. Not huge, but it was, it's still, uh, still some big savings for us. Um, here's a breakdown of that economic value. Uh, we saved about $6,700 in electricity, uh, the kilowatts there. And this is a calculation that, that uh, I'm not real familiar with, but the, the uh, program helps us with. And that's our greenhouse gas pounds and our CO2 levels. So again, at least we know where we are so that next year we can come back and say, hey, we lowered this greenhouse gas level uh, by something that we've done, replacing lights or whatever. Um, here's the, the Farm Smart tool. Like I said, it, uh, the lighting. Um, and uh, just making us aware of our lighting and replacing the lights would lower our, our usage way down. OK, so you say, well, what does that matter? And how can I communicate that to my community? Well, a lot of us give tours on our dairies. A lot of us talk to the Kiwanis Club or, or whoever, church groups. But if we can put it in their terms and say, you know what? By making those few changes that we did at Prairie Land Dairy, I've taken 14 cars off the road. That's a big deal, OK? And they can, they can understand that. And it's all part of telling our story, telling our dairy story. And we have to continue to do that. Or we saved enough power to power nine homes, OK? People can uh, associate with those types of things. So, so anyway, uh, small changes make a huge impact. Prairie Land Dairy taking nine cars off the road, or nine homes, not a big deal. But if we all do it as an industry, we can. And our commitment as an industry, what the Innovation Center has said, is we are going to lower, 
lower our greenhouse gases by 25 percent by 2020. It's a very lofty goal, but uh, one in which we're committed to and, and want to do it. Now, the good part about that is it's not all about you and I as dairy farmers doing this. Okay, if you, this is a gallon of milk, and this is the percentage of greenhouse gases in a gallon of milk. Or I'm sorry, the carbon footprint, so CO2, pounds of CO2. Okay, you can see the milk production on our farms is only 51% of that. Okay, um, feed production is 20%. There's a lot of things we can do to reduce our CO2 production in how we farm or, or where we buy our feed from. Um, and then, of course, we have the cow part here on our dairy farms. We can improve that. Uh, then we got processing. Processing is 6%. Then we got the packaging, which is 3.5%. What can we do in the packaging world? And this is what's great about the Innovation Center, having everybody in the same room, okay? If you'd have told me 20 years ago when I started in this business that you'd have had all the processors and all the dairy farmers and all the retailers all sitting in the same room, I sat on a promotion board. We couldn't even get two, two processors to sit in the same room together, okay? Now we got all their CEOs sitting in the same room together talking about sustainability and how they what they can do around packaging to lower the carbon footprint of a gallon of milk. Uh, just, I just never would have thought it would have happened, but it's happening. Okay, something else we don't talk, we don't think about much, is what's the retailer's play in the carbon footprint of a gallon of milk? According to this study, it's six and a half percent. They have the lights blasting in those coolers, they got the open front coolers. They can close those, put them behind glass in the closed doors, um, and save a whole lot of electricity and really reduce the carbon footprint. So we have to have these conversations with the retailers as well. And then one I never thought about was the consumers and 5%. What are they doing with the, with, the, with the old plastic gallon of milk? Are they recycling the jug or not? That all has to do with the, with the carbon footprint of a gallon of milk. So there's a lot of things that go into it. Um, we're 51% of it, so we're a large chunk, but there's a lot of other people that have to play the game with us. And you can go over here, and this is cheese, a uh, very similar slide uh, there. So, okay. All right, so what, uh, as I, just to reiterate, um, the role as a producer you can play is help us to establish a baseline in the industry of where our carbon footprint is, what your farmer's doing, what your practices are. There's really no risk, risk to it. As, as Roberta said, it's very private, uh, very protected. But we really need this as an industry to market, market our milk. Um, so get online if you can. Try the Farm Smart. Uh, do an energy efficiency audit. This says consider an energy efficiency audit. I would say any progressive dairy ought to do it because it will show you how to save money on your farm and be more profitable. And uh, the last thing there is nominate someone who's doing a great job around sustainability so that we can, the goal around the sustainability awards is to is to av or, uh, publicize examples of people who are doing really, really good things, and really neat things around sustainability. So that's why uh, we have the Sustainability Awards, uh, to show others uh, what's being done out there. So um, uh, that's about what I had. Uh, Roberto, you wanted to close, close us up here? Um, the, we've got some wonderful YouTube videos if you'd like to see them on our Innovation Center website. And I also wanted to point out, uh, Dan mentioned, you know, you really not just maybe but should get an energy audit. We're going to have some flyers that Laura's going to hand out as you leave if you'd like more information on how to get an energy audit. Those are wonderful, wonderful um, uh, a process to go through. You can get funding to do the audit itself. Once you get an audit, you're then, um, it enables you to apply for money for implementation. Because I know a lot of you are saying, well, it's great. I know I should change this out, but I can't afford to. That's why the audit qualifies you for pots of money with NRCS in which you can go ahead and do implementation. We also have on our Innovation Center website. Can I interrupt for just, yes, for go just ahead. a second? Um, also, a lot of your uh, local power companies have incentives mm -hmm. as well where, like our power company, it's not huge, but they pay $25 per fixture for a light if you replace it. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's all kinds of uh, mm -hmm. uh, incentives there for you as well on the, 
on your local side as, as well as the USDA. Yep. So if you go to the U.S. Dairy website, U.S. Dairy uh, front slash save energy, you can click on your state and it will automatically take you and show you what those um, uh, cooperatives or what other cost shares are out there, whether it's, you know, your electric utility company or something else. We try to compile those resources on a national basis so you can go to the website, click on your state, and then you can access it. We want to make sure that, you know, everyone appreciates the fact that communicating makes good business sense. You do a great job. We need to tell people, you know, your mother always told you to toot your horn. Nobody else will toot it for you. Uh, that's kind of what's applying here. Um, and again, if you're interested in joining the movement and learning more about the guide, learning more about Farm Smart, here's the website. And Laura is also going to be handing out some brochures that give you the website again as a takeaway, um, a little more information about the guide. Um, and we encourage you all to visit the website to learn more. Any questions for Dan? Questions? They're quiet. <laughs> nope. No, no more questions? Okay. Yes. Okay. Thanks again to Robert, uh, Roberta and Dan for that presentation. Uh, dairy sustainability, why it's important to you. Our thanks also to nutrition and physiology. And I hope all of you enjoy your uh, time here at the Dairy Expo. If you're a dairy producer, nutrition and physiology, Mark will have a handout for you back there. And also there will be some handouts for producers for FarmSmart. So. And I have a business card up here if anyone's interested. All right, once again, give me uh, help. Join me in thanking Dan and Roberta. <laughs>